Welcome back. This is Fantastic Paints and How We Hide Them. I'm not Chris. And I'm not Karina. But we're here together. As usual. For more fun times and shenanigans. shenanigans. Um, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. These, This is the Trash Panda Club, <laughs> um, our little den of trash pandas. Uh, we are siblings who are chronically and mentally ill uh, with some neurodivergence thrown in there. Mm-hmm. So we talk a lot about uh, life of invisible illnesses and chronic illnesses. Um, and we both have Ehlers-Danlos type 3, which is fun. Yes. Super cool. Dislocating all the time. Good stuff. And that's just the beginning. Yeah. I mean, wait till we get into it. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> we tend to be more experiential. Mm-hmm. We don't like to um, go into the clinical side as much because there's a lot of that and not a lot of like, let's talk about this honestly. Yeah. Let's talk about the experience of being chronically ill. Right. Because you don't want to be alone. You're right. not alone. And that's what we're here for. Exactly. So our whole thing is to expose the suffering in the world so that we can all suffer together Mm -hmm. and not feel so alone. Um, Yeah. Where can they find us? Oh, you can find us on most uh, audio podcast platforms, Mm -hmm. except for Apple. Still working on it. Yeah. It's not a never Apple. It's just a a process that I can't master because I have ADHD. So. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh, you can also check us out on YouTube. Uh-huh. You can watch us. Watch the funnies on uh, TikTok. Yes. And join the conversation on Discord, mm-hmm. which is full of lovely, wonderful human beings that we adore so very much. Mm-hmm. Um, we also do a Friday night live and a Saturday morning live most weeks. Um, so if you are sub- subscribed to the channel, you can see those um, as they come up. Or if you're in the Discord, we always let you guys know. When we go live. Yeah. And it's a fun chance to just interact with other people, not yeah. just us. Or oh. ask questions about things that we've talked about or even suggest ideas for what we should talk about. Absolutely. So. A lot of what we're going to do today um, was suggested to us. So. Oh, yeah. We're excited to get into it. What are we talking about today? Uh, we got three things. Three things. Because we're going things. back to season two when we talked about everything all at once. <laughs> <laughs> for fun in me time well we know that we can't get a lot out of some of it so we're going to be talking about pharmacy drama mm-hmm. and how fun it is to have to need the pharmacy yeah uh we're going to talk about uh, what was the other one what was number two? Oh, oh yes allowing harm to humor doctors so that moment when you say sure i'll do this treatment that i know won't do anything or is going to cause harm we've been there Yep. Uh, and then we're going to do a retrospective uh, kind of look back to see, kind of analyze how our younger selves would feel about us currently. Yeah. Because that would be really interesting. Right. So. Well, and I kind of want to talk about like, what would you say now yeah. to your younger selves? Oh, totally. As, as those ages come up. So we'll have both sides of the coin, I think. Yeah. Which will be really It'll cool. be a fun conversation. Yeah. But first, it is time for the weekly recap. Check in. Indeed. Um, yeah. Do you want to go first or you want me to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Because mine can kind of lead into yours because you've yeah. been dealing with <laughs> mainly what I've been dealing with this week, which mm-hmm. I'm still fatigued. My my weekly recaps have been really lame because I haven't had my Concerta, which I take for ADHD and fatigue. Yes. I have chronic fatigue. And I mean chronic fatigue. <laughs> like crawling out of bed to move because you have no energy. Like Yeah. Not like, just being lazy. Your limbs are heavy. Your head is heavy. Um, how are you supposed to hold your trunk up when it's like, yeah, nah, no, fatigue is no joke. Yeah. And it, it got in the way of my life this week. Cause I, I was supposed to do, we play destiny and I was supposed to do a new raid, which is a, like a group activity. And they have a contest for if you can get it done in day one in a challenge, <clears throat> that's like challenge mode. Yeah. And I was supposed to do that, but I, over the last weeks, haven't been able to get ready. Like you're supposed to prepare and get all your stuff sorted and cause it's yeah. really hard couldn't do it so i missed out entirely and it really sucked and it was it was making me think back on how a year ago i wasn't nearly as bad off as i am now yeah and we've been we've both been kind of like sinking in that yeah well and it's it's one of those i mean for me this week it's really pertinent because this week was really rough yeah um after monday because i feel like last weekend i didn't get enough rest but i feel like we were also in bed all of sunday so <clears throat> i'm not really sure yeah well sometimes the deal is. sleep doesn't mean rest right yeah 
It just means being forced to be unconscious like you have been fed Benadryl. Yeah. Repeatedly. Side note, that's how I woke up this morning. Yeah. I woke up at seven and I couldn't function. <laughs> you couldn't what? Function. I was like, oh, I'm going to uh-huh. get up and get ready. And I had no energy. And so I went back to bed and then woke up at 10. Yep. Right before you got here. That, yeah. I woke up at seven and then was like, no, <laughs> no. And went back to bed and then I woke up to a foot cramp oh. and a cramp in my calf. So that was really cool. And uh, yeah, that woke me up real quick. Yeah. Boom. Um, yeah, this week was rough. It was the week before break. It was the week of exhibitions for our kids. We were hosting other schools. It was just, it was Lots. really intense all week. And I don't know, just working with the kids is a lot of, I think of a lot of what it is, is you had to deal with a lot of other adults. Yes. A lot. Yeah. Like most of the stories we, that we, we we were talking about, it yeah. involves adult drama. Oh my God. All the time. And like, not kids. Well, with the kids in the, in ways that they get kind of messed over, but yeah. Well, and it's just, it's one of those things where I had to give a training on Wednesday mm-hmm. and that really showed me how little awareness they have of like sped as a whole and what my job is and what is like next steps for kids right um and what they're like the kids are working on and so on so we had a pretty intense meeting on wednesday that was hard (laughs) well and you didn't go in on tuesday yeah oh yeah monday night i came home and i was because i was just i've been in so much pain lately because my pelvis is a wreck yeah a wreck and i think it's probably structural maybe because i feel like my pubic bone is separating in like at times and then all of the like it just feels like your whole pelvis is just folding on itself right that's that's what's like happening but it's also cockeyed so i have this like weird tilt in my gait and everything and it's just been miserable like full-blown miserable and then i went to like make a pt appointment Mm -hmm. um for physical therapy to see if they could do anything because if i'm right and it's the like pelvic girdle instability to the degree that i think it is with the because that's when my back it does that thing where it literally sounds like my back is breaking um and everything snaps back into place in my pelvis but it's hard to get that to happen because i haven't been doing it on purpose right but the the fix for it is really severe yeah. If you, if it is what you think it is, it's like right. They're they like, they attach the bones together. Pretty much, yeah. They would just like, <laughs> yeah, screw them together. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, if I want babies, I probably shouldn't do that because that would not be a, f- a fun or smart idea. Right. To be like, hey, <laughs> that's like a forced cesarean, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do that. No. No, no. What you got to do, <laughs> you got to go in like a truck beforehand, and you have to be like, all right, I'm gonna have my baby soon. <laughs> Uh, can you undo the screws? <laughs> I need you to go in there and just loosen some stuff up. <laughs> just temporarily. Put you in a car jack? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of like on a, on a gurney or anything. Stirrups are still there. <laughs> but now you're on a car. There's like a car lift. All right. Get cool. To, get unscrewing. <laughs> Come on. Ma'am, the police are coming. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So Monday I went home and I was just so overwhelmed and had been in pain all day. And I was just, just pissy in general. I keep hitting you. I'm sorry. It's fine. Um, Because it had been days at that point because it started Saturday. Yeah. And then it was all of Saturday, all of Sunday, Sunday. all of Monday. And then I just went home and I found my husband and I was like, I need affection and just cried and was like, I don't know how I'm supposed to keep doing this. Like, I'm literally killing myself just doing work and coming home and eating. Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) it's burnout. There's not enough of, like, there's no spoons. There's no no more spoons. We've borrowed them from everybody. We've (laughs) cleared out every dishwasher in America. Yeah. There's no spoons. (laughs) No. And then being in pain that long, that consistently Mm -hmm. is just, it's a drain. Oh, yeah. On your, like, psyche. It's not good. Especially when you're, like, trying to treat it. Yeah. Like, you take your meds, you do all the stuff you're supposed to do, and you're still in pain. Yeah. Yep. So what what do you do? Exactly. You just sit there with it. Right. 
And then think about it. Yeah. And then get mad about it. Because then I stayed home Tuesday yeah. because I was just in too much pain to move. I couldn't put any weight on my left leg at mm. all yeah. in the morning. It just was not happening. I, it just sucked. And then Wednesday I had to give the training that I was like, I don't know. It just had weird vibes. Weird vibes, but I think certain people took good things away from it. Yes. Well, and I got some odd compliments and some just sweet compliments. Yeah. So that was something. But I also had to call Summer and be like, ah, tell me if that was weird and gross and icky because I'm lost and confused and second guessing my entire life. <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah. Because we, we do it with the podcast. Yeah. Afterwards, we're like, I don't know. Right. And then you people go, we love it. So yeah. thank you for the, the compliments. Right. We can accept them now, which is different. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so it was just a really long and difficult week. And it was one of those times where I was looking at it going uh, two years ago, I think, like just before COVID, I was still going to the gym one to two times a week, every week, right after work. Mm -hmm. I was still coming home and like doing stuff and cleaning the house and running and folding laundry. And I was able to do stuff and things. And so beyond like losing functionality which yeah, we knew was gonna happen so it's not like a surprise but it's also it, one of those like you look back and you're like this wasn't this hard before right. and it's it's it you know, like like you said it's not a surprise but it's it's not a good feeling no it's not because it does hit you yeah. it's one of those things that when things get really bad you're faced with oh no yeah this is forever right well, and that was one of the things I was like hung up on when I was crying in my husband's arms. <clears throat> I got to be dramatic there. Sorry. His masculine. His masculine musk <laughs> all around. <laughs> and now we. Uh, she went there. My brain. Help. I love your brain. Oh, my God. But it was like, <laughs> this is never not going to be hard. Yeah. And it's just getting harder. And that is so unfair. Yes. Because we have put in so much fucking work just to make it to 30. <laughs> and now it's going to be harder. Yeah, 30, I had to make what? a big change. Like that was when I started just being unable to function too. Yeah. I remember that. It's hard because you're like, I have to. I don't have yeah. like a choice. But I also don't like being grumpy and pissed off by the end of the day. Right. And I don't like not being able to pull my weight at home. Or feeling like I'm not pulling my weight at home. And I don't like that I... Like, my dogs haven't been walked for a while. And my house is a mess. Like... And that I'm not doing a master's program. Like, all these things come to the surface. Literally, all the same feels. Yeah. I, I agree 100%. Yeah. Like, it's... Instead of dogs, I have kids. So, it's like, I haven't done this with the kids. I didn't do this with the kids. Wow, yeah. I should have done this. Or, you know, look yeah. at... I need to clean all the stuff. I, like... <laughs> yeah. All the time. And it's it's a mental battle inside yourself. Yep. You know, like no one. No, there's no one out there. Right. right. Like Randy's not berating you. Right. The kids aren't on my shit. <laughs> Jen's not like, hey, you're dropping the ball. I really need to get it together. <laughs> That's all me and my brain doing that. Yeah, exactly. Like, yep. It's just you just feel guilty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That you can't keep up. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's like, I don't know. Like we've said. Uh, life is hard for everybody, right? But the difference between you climbing a steep staircase and us climbing a cliff face. <laughs> Definitely free felt climbing. That this week. It's Holy great. God. Good and show. Sometimes about you free fall. On HBO, by the way, if you watch that. <laughs> They're not sponsoring us. But they should. They should be. because I'm all about it. Jason Momoa <laughs> teaching people how to free climb. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> I think so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about, because this was something that was really pertinent. And um, Doggo actually started the thought thread yeah. yesterday in our live. So this is a really interesting one um, that we're going to do a part of today. Yes. So pharmacy drama and the problems with accessibility, the disconnect, the and disconnect, the apathy. Yeah. yeah. I've encountered all of those. Mm hmm Imagine if it was all at once, though. Like, oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> That's not good at all. There are people out there yeah. that have to deal with that. Like, filling prescriptions for me is a stressful thing that I have to do. Yeah. 
it's never like it's like I see Dr. David, right? I'm like, David, you're the best. We had a great conversation. Thank you for all the help. Yeah. And then my my heart sinks. Oh, because you go... have to go fight the pharmacy. Right. Because yeah. now it's time to fight the pharmacy. And it always is a fight. Like, I mean, even you're in encountering it in a way. Yeah. Oh, this is the third time this year that my doctor's been gone for like a week. Um, and I went to fill my pain medication and got the message back that she was out until next friday and i'm like no why should i have to fill a week late why why doesn't i just it bothers me so much because i've had doctors who who go on trips they're yeah. like you know they do things but they plan ahead and they let you know and they like if you're gonna fill that week they set it up so that you yeah. can fill that well week. but she doesn't put me i don't think she puts me in like a system of rotation because i'm oh, bi-weekly oh i get it yeah i'm bi-weekly and once i've filled it it disappears from my like request list so i have a list that has every oh, medication i, I take because you're not you're not being treated like a chronic chronic right you're yeah yeah oh wow so i think it must be like a paperwork thing yeah but they but don't even leave then, it like... on there for me to request it so i literally have to email yeah my doctor every single time i need the refill and of course, I don't want to look like I'm filling early. So I fill like day 30. Hey, could you fill this today or Monday? Mm -hmm. And now she's out until the next Friday and I'm out of medication. And I have break this week and I want to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. But I might need some help from some pain medication <laughs> to do that. Well, yeah, you're going to hurt hurt body, clean house yourself. Exactly. But I don't know. It's just, it's ridiculous. Well, and Doggo was saying something similar about them not planning ahead. Right. right. Like, I, I just, it makes no sense to me. Like they wanted an ID at one point, even though it wasn't something they needed an ID for. Right. Well, um, and, but then they also like told him about an interaction that, yeah. that is like a big deal. Right. That, well, and this person has been taking these two medications for a very long time. It sounded like. Yeah. He said like a decade yeah. plus. Yeah. And then just now, a pharmacist was like, hey, uh, are you aware well, of the interaction?" And then he went back and talked to the person and was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I have been dealing with these these problems. Oh, it's like, so you have the, the first guy who just was apathetic and didn't care. Right. And then everybody in between, like. Right, exactly. No one caught it. What? Until this new pharmacist. Yeah. Excuse it's, me? It's all luck of the draw. And like, I... I get frustrated about pharmacy stuff as well, but I also have it much, much easier. Yeah. And I'm aware of that um, because it's Kaiser. Right. And Everything's so done through Kaiser. It's through their pharmacy. And usually they'll let you know like, oh, you went to fill this thing. We won't have it until Tuesday, but we'll give you a, like a partial refill or whatever. Right. But that's, <laughs> see, that's the thing. I can't do that, that, that right. stuff because if I did a partial refill mm -hmm. or if they which they've done to me, if Walgreens decides, hey, we don't have enough, we're just going to give you a partial. Yeah. That screws me over. Oh, yeah, because then it looks like you've already filled and you need another fill. No. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what do I... And I... they won't t take their own word for it. Right. When they're like, oh, it was a partial fill. They're like, mm -mm. no. Mm -mm. Exactly. No. Yeah. That one has happened to me twice. Oh, and I hate it. Just the worst. I had a really good pharmacy for the longest time, and I miss them so much. Which one was that? It's called Cordant. It was oh, in the yeah, DTC. Would, uh -huh. We would we would go to the tech center and be in person and we would just go there and they knew us. Yeah. And they were like really like it was just beautiful. If I needed something, they Good would relationship. Right. Yeah. They they would be they'd give us heads up on on interactions. Yeah. They made sure that we had Narcan that was in like in. Yeah. Non, non expired. So like they would know that I needed to update mine. Right. To, just to be safe. Like you want to keep that around. Yeah. That's just a safety issue. But like that that was the kind of place they were. They would think ahead and they would care and if something was going on they right. would let you know well i think there's a difference between like a pharmacist mm -hmm. and a pharmacy tech yeah and i feel like there's a lot of places where i think all they employ are pharmacy techs yeah or there's one there's pharmacist one pharmacist and then and they only work certain times well they have to do the one thing whatever whatever right like yeah. the one pharmacist who's dealing with the hundreds of people who are trying to fill things at the same time right so like i get it I, I just totally get it. It's a just a good system. No. That, and it bothers me that you can go to the same pharmacy over and over and over again. And they still 
there are still times when they're like, well, why do you need this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Like the drama with trying to get my concerta filled. Yeah. Like, I think they've gotten it filled. Mm-hmm. Like they've gotten their shipments. They just haven't let me know. Yeah. And we've been calling. Like we've been checking in every couple of days to be like, hey, is this in? When will it be in? No, no answers. Mm-mm. Well, that's a like nationwide problem. And it's the FDA's fault, by the way. They refused, refused to allow <clears throat> production to amp up. Mm-hmm. Because let everyone suffer. It'll be fun that right. way. Right. Which what didn't affect my med specifically, because I take like not an Adderall, but like an off. Yeah. An offshoot of it. But then doctors were like, oh, well, you can't fill your Adderall. Let me put you on this other thing, uh-huh. which happens to be something that I need. So yeah. so we have supply issues all the way down. Oh, yeah. It just the stimulant train. It's great. It's been oh, killer. God. It's it's given me a really interesting look into what the podcast would have been if I didn't have concerted at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Because I dread the podcast now. Oh, and not like I don't like doing it. Like, I'm worried that I'm not going to have enough energy to be here and, like, function. Yeah. Right? Like, last night when we did the live, I was mm-hmm. dead. I was trying so hard to not be, but I was just dead. Yeah. It was, it like, the podcast would not exist without it. Right? I, I am guaranteeing Jeez. it. It's miserable. No, it's awful. And then they don't, they, they just don't think about it. Mm-mm. And, like, the interactions thing bothers me because, A... Your doctor should have been looking at that. B, how did it go for like a well, decade with nobody being like, hey. The, the doctor thing I get because you could have two different doctors who don't know what you're right. on. Or don't think about it. You know what I mean? Like, Or have a prescription from two different doctors. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it like. But the pharmacy yeah. that there's a system for most pharmacists that will tell you there's an interaction. Yeah. And then they will tell you. Mm-hmm. Didn't that happen when we went into your interview? For the pain management, when like the first time we went in, there there was an interaction and he brought it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we were like, oh, yeah, no, we know yeah. about that. But like the system told him. Right. And he brought it up to us. Yeah. Well, and it's a different system, too, because they have access to all of my medications. Right. In one list. And they could be like, OK, input all of that information. What about this one? Will it interact badly? You know what bothers me mm-hmm. is that the pharmacists. To, or like the fact that some people don't have access to your full list. Yeah. But my fucking dentist does. My dentist knows everything that I'm taking. Wow. Oh, oh, right? What? But but my doctors know. God forbid that they know everything that I'm on. Right. No, but the dentist, no, he's got it. And he knows. And he knows that there's interactions. And he brought it up to me that there's an interaction between these two things. Oh, my God. That's just crazy to me. Yeah. Or like when you interact with doctors and they're like who put you on that yeah oh god Uh, or worse when the pharmacy decides to be like that oh yeah 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 when they or like they get judgy Mm -hmm. yeah there's there's a few that are just like the worst thing that can happen to you is that you need to fill early because of an emergency yeah so i've had it happen where i had to leave town for like a month and i needed to get my my fill early so that i could take Mm -hmm. it with me and the doctor was like Cool. Yes, let's do this. Yeah, I understand. You're not a hazard. You're you follow the rules. Yeah. Oh, but and the, then the pharmacy, pharmacy's like, mm, you no, do really. No, you can't do it. Your insurance will cover. It's like I'll pay for it. Oh well. Uh, da, da, da. But I was still, like, can you call my doctor and ask the doctor? Because they're the one prescribing it. And it, I mean, it happened, but I almost didn't make it because it took like two or three days for them to like. Oh God. Finally, call and get yeah. the go ahead. Like well, yeah. That's what I'm anticipating because every time this has happened where my doctor is off doing whatever she does in her private time, I don't know, skiing, I have no idea. But she like, this is the third time that we've had problems because she's been out. Mm -hmm. Last time I had people I met in the pain group texting me going, have you been able to get a hold of them? They're not filling anything. Mm -hmm. And then this time around, I'm like... You guys either fill it or I'm going to go to my primary and I don't care if I get in trouble. Right. I don't care because if you're not going to do your part, like this isn't a luxury for me, guys. This is like a thing that I'm prescribed because I need it. Yeah. Sometimes I forget that I need things. So (laughs) I like uh, I'll 
I'll be like, oh, I'll just I'll just suffer. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is a good segue. Which I mean, subject, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. No, they're just. And the accessibility is the other part. Mm-hmm. Like, where can you send your med your meds? Right. Are you like, are you stuck at one pharmacy? I are am. You, yeah. I'm locked in. Are you stuck in one um, specific pharmacy company? And I was in that. Uh-huh. And then Cordant, Cordant and... was a cool one because they, they had a deal with the pharmacy. So I oh, didn't have cool. to do anything. Literally, nice. they would send it in. Yeah. It would go straight to them and then it would be ready. That's awesome. But they only work with registered doctors like they registered with them. Yeah. Like it was like a company setup. Yeah. You know, you use us exclusively and blah, blah, blah. Mm, OK. But they were so good. They were so worth it. <laughs> um, And. It, it was it was there. funny like when I changed doctor they didn't know so they kept <clears throat> filling for me oh and then the day they found out was so sad they were like we oh. can't we can't work with this doctor they're outside of our our network and they were like we'll fill for you yeah but next month we won't be able to and they were really sad about it yeah like they were genuinely upset and I was like so sad oh. Oh. the other one I know. hate is when they're like no you need to have an appointment before you can fill this I've never had that happen. Never? Never. Oh, my God. I have that happen, I don't know, like once a year. Really? Yeah. Where something will come up where they're like supposed to do a recheck, but nobody tells me until I go to fill oh, my medication. The yearly thing. I, yeah. We do get that in a way. We don't have to do sit downs, but yes. Yeah. But they like they want to do an office visit to talk mm-hmm. about your medications and ugh, 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 stop it. Well, and it, it makes sense, it. the stuff that they do like sometimes, yeah. but like the bureaucracy of it all yeah and the fact that the pharmacy can just straight up be like no right and i could be like like you said i'm locked into this pharmacy it has to be this specific one because if i change it it gets gets blacklisted blacklisted. and i can't use them anymore yeah so much bureaucracy right so like if i if i want to go in and fill and they're like "Mm, no (laughs) no you're just stuck with "Eh, no yeah no like last time i filled with david I was like, can we fill a day early? Mm-hmm. Which not, it wasn't even early, early. It was within insurance. Like, yeah. cause insurance goes up to 28 days. Yeah. And then you can fill. So I asked him if we could fill on the 28th day and he was like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. He was fine with it, but they gave a shit about it. Cause it was like a change. There was a change. And I was like, like, but I didn't change it. My doctor my, changed yeah, it. The doctor said it's okay. Why? why insurance you... will cover it. Yeah. Like everything's fine, but no, it became a hiccup <sighs> because it was a change so stupid yeah yeah pharmacies man yeah it's kind of the worst and i get it like there's a lot of pharmacies that are super short staffed but they're super short staffed because it's it's a shit show it is (laughs) and people don't stay well and we get it like when jen and i go in we've even done this thing where like we'll see that like the techs are suffering because people are just being total bastards and we'll be like, okay, let's go get him a snack. Like we've gone through and we've gotten oh, snacks and sweet. water and stuff for them. And been like, here you go. Yeah. Sorry that you guys are dealing with this. Yeah. Because we, we had it. We worked right. customer service. Mm-hmm. And they have like customer service on drugs because you're dealing with people who are entitled. Yeah. Like they, they know like that they, they need be- to order their meds and yeah. they need you to get them to them today. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. No, the whole system is stupid. Mm-hmm. It's re- it's just really, really dumb. Yeah. None of it makes any sense. And it's not working. Yeah. It's, it's just not working. Because they're disconnected and then... Yeah. And then accessibility. Mm-hmm. Because who's going to get meds first? The rich neighborhoods or the poor neighborhoods? I wonder. Hmm. Hmm. So then you have to like try to go fill at a pharmacy far away from you. And then they're like, mm, why are you so far away from where you live? Are you like filling other places? Yeah. This that. is literally my life. Yes. We have to go all the way to Parker, which is really far from us. Like 30, 40 minutes away. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Like that's where we go because that pharmacy is open 24 seven and is near a hospital. So they have a better supply and they're yeah. more understanding of things. Mm-hmm. Because they're less stressed out. No, I think 
they are stressed beyond reason. No. Oh, okay. Like that one. Well, because they yeah. get the the people that come out of the hospital go to that one. Oh. So they're like in there twenty four seven, right? So that like makes sense. It's real all the time. <laughs> But I found them because I, I did that thing where I went to the hospital and they were like, here, take this with you and fill it. And we went yeah. to fill it right away because it was the only 24-7. Nice. Walgreens. Nice. But it's good. It's a good place. Yeah. Mostly. It's like a 75-25 split. <laughs> I mean, three out of four is not that bad. No. It's still so stressful. Yeah. Like, I get anxiety about it. Mm-hmm. Like, major anxiety. And, like, yeah. I'll sit in the car and wait outside. And it takes, like, three hours. Wow. Because we have to submit and then we want to pick it up. Right. And well, other places. Yeah. Are you like going to go home? Yeah. And then it's it'll be so like, far. And no, we wait driving back and forth. Mm-mm. And then we don't want to be like the guys that are pressuring them. You know, like the, right. the, the people that will sit there and be like stare at them until they're done. right. <laughs> Jen, Drool on the windows. <laughs> Jen is just a sweetie and she takes care of them. But that's good. I'm sure they appreciate that. I hope. Yeah. But yeah. Pharmacies. Can't live with them. Can't Just have can't. drugs without them. <laughs> drugs that keep me alive. Right. Like, <laughs> that's a heart medication. Yeah. That's a blood predator. Pre- predator. Predator. Pressure. That's a blood predator. Up. It's going to take your blood. Unless you take this med. <laughs> take the med. Keep the blood predator away. <laughs> you mean vampire? No. Ticks? No. It's a blood predator. What? You've never heard of blood predator? What's wrong with you? Blood Privileged. (laughs) Well, people don't know about blood predators. Almost sounds like a debt collector. Like a guy that goes house to house. The blood predators come to call. I'm here for your blood. (laughs) No, I took my med. Anyway. Well, that's a thing now. (laughs) What's next? Next is the fun conversation we get to have about (laughs) allowing harm to humor doctors yeah which kind of fits in with pharmacy stuff because it it applies to more than just doctors like i've done it with pharmacists Mm -hmm. where you concede to their want even though you know it's a negative yeah like i know this is bad for me i know i'm gonna throw up for the next month but i'm gonna do it because it's what you expect me to do yep or if there is an interaction and they're still like you shouldn't be doing this. And you're like, but it's working. I will take the side effect. That's fine. Yeah. I'll take it. I'm aware of it and I'm good with it. Yeah. God, jeez. No. And there's a lot of that that goes on, especially when we're talking about pain as a whole. Mm-hmm. Because for us, the like joint pain, their first move is always an x-ray, which mm-hmm. doesn't show anything. Right. It's not bone muscular so then what comes next is like an mri right yeah but usually paired with pt they throw pt at there at the same time try to get you to do pt first right and then they'll be like well you're doing pt get the mri yeah because it you know it takes time so at least they're trying to be proactive but pt is usually destructive bad idea yeah yeah Um, or you get people who don't understand what hypermobility is like yeah i've had a pt look at me and be like well if it hyperextends there just don't move to there and I'm like, I have been moving the way I move in my body my entire life. You really think I'm going to be aware enough at all times to not hyper ex- like extend something? Could you imagine the amount of spoons what? it would take to live that life? Right. Constantly. Like, even, like we're even pretty the way aware. I'm sitting right now is yeah. not good. But no. We're self aware a lot too, though, mm-hmm. is what I'm saying. Like, imagine if you had to be super aware of every movement. Oh my God. No. Like, oh, no, thank you. And to what end? Yeah. I ask you. Yeah, no. But then it comes down to things like injections. Oh, yeah. Injections. Injections is usually one of the first things I get. Mm-hmm. So it, I don't get them anymore because I have a horrible reaction to them. This is a great story. <clears throat> I've done prednisone um, a lot. Yeah. And I've done pills. I've done injections. And I'm kind of allergic to it. Mm-hmm. And I tell them that and mm-hmm. they don't believe me until I have the bad reaction. Mm-hmm. So they'll be like, okay, we're going to do this and this and this, and you're going to need prednisone. And I'm like, no. I have a bad reaction to it. And they're like, oh, what happens? And I'm like, I swell up, I turn red and I start getting a like brain fog and confusion. And then it turns into a uh, horrible pain. They're like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> you're making it up. Right. 
You're... We're going to do it anyways. We're going to try it. It's always we're going to try it. Yeah. Like, I've tried it. We may as well try. Do you not understand that I know this? Yeah. I've... Or, or they hit you with the like, well, we could do surgery, but that's so drastic and you're just so young. Um, I really just, I think we need to go this route first. Yeah. And you're like. A lot of our, our, our people can understand the young thing. Yeah. You're too young to have your problem. Yep. I hate that. Yeah. That I'm sorry. This is a tangent, but I hate that you can be too young to be taken care of. Because yeah. if you're going to your doctor for a reason, mm -hmm. you're going for a reason. Even if you're making it up, they should at least test you out of it, right? Can't mm -hmm. they be like, oh, well, there's nothing here. No, no, you're too young. Sorry. Yeah. Just sucks to be you. I don't believe you. Sorry, I went you're through. You're young and you lie. I had eight years of you're too young and I still get it. Like, oh, you're 35. You're too young to have this major back problem. <laughs> Sorry, I had a tumor on my spine yeah. and they went in and they took it out and then it started to adhere to itself. Yep. Do you understand what spinal swelling feels like? <laughs> no, they don't. It's not don't. a joy ride. <clears throat> no, but they don't. They don't understand. Mm -mm. They can't understand. Yeah. They refuse to understand. And so we have to play the game. Yeah. Of like, yeah, I will do the things that you're telling me to do simply to be like, yeah, that doesn't work. Like I said, it doesn't work. Right. Or sometimes you can't even say that doesn't work because they will. Oh, they're they, they're there will be consequences. Right. There are situations where you don't argue. You just go, yeah. okay, we'll try this. Mm -hmm. And you know in your heart of hearts that it's a bad idea. Yeah. But you're going to do it. Yeah. Just so that you can move forward. Exactly. Because like you do, you have to like pass these trials mm -hmm. to be taken seriously. And I mean, it's easier after you've had so many surgeries. Because at that point, people are like, oh, wow, you've had a lot of surgeries Okay, so we know that we probably have to go that route. Right. So it does, in a way, get easier. But also, <laughs> it's always still there. That's such a catch-22, too. Like, yeah. you're too young. You don't have enough surgeries. But I'm young and I need a surgery. So <laughs> yeah, how do we get that first one going? How do, how do I prove to you that I need it and that you're, I want it? You're too young to uh, have this surgery that might make you feel better for a little while. <clears throat> or my least favorite one is, well, it might not last. So we're not going to do it. Yeah. I've had friends who have come across that where they're like, we could do surgery. Well, but you're you're really young to do surgery. I've had to argue against that argument. Yeah. Like, I'd rather do it. Yeah. Like, you're a surgeon. You cut people open. That's do exactly it. it. I go straight for the surgeon. And I'm like, you want to cut. I want you to do the thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's do the thing. And they're usually like. You want to you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, I want to do it. I really do. And then they're like, heck yeah, man, let's do it. Well, and to our benefit, we've had so many surgeries and we've recovered so well from them. Yeah. Like, yeah, as far as surgery goes, it's like they they look at us and they go, yes, that one. <laughs> they're not going to be a problem and they're going to heal. Like, I don't have yeah. to worry about them uh -huh. post surgery. Right. We don't have a lot of risk factors. No. I mean, we have a lot of risk factors for like scarring. Right. But... Um, and having some complications there. But beyond it. Like... I mean, th there are catches like the yeah. the what what is it? The nerve block stuff. But that's yeah. we know about that now. Exactly. You can't do nerve blocks. Well, like, you it's don't not a big take deal. It, it to heart. And we were talking about this yesterday in the live where uh, you're listening to our medical history. All of that should have been a little more traumatic than it feels for us. Oh, yeah. It doesn't feel that way at all. It's always mm -hmm. just like, yep, I learned a thing. Take note move on to the next one yeah. with what I have learned. And so I could have come out of that really like angry and upset. And we've had failed surgeries. Medical team. Yeah. Like you've had to go in and redo your shoulder before I had to do it. Yeah. Like we need free touches on things uh -huh. that aged out like they're supposed to, but yeah. like, it's not like we're like, Oh no, this is horrible. Right. Why isn't it perfect all the time? Yeah. Well, and I think they also expect us to not want to because they're yeah. like, it's only going to last three to five years. And we're like, no, that's fine. I'll take three that's to five good. years. Are you kidding I will, me? Yeah. It's cool. You're going to do it again? And they're okay. like eight years tops. And you're like, wow, that would be cool if that happened. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Keep cutting away. We will do this like once a year. I'll keep coming back. <laughs> well, yeah. like, And now it's just, it's like touch ups now. Because like I've had most of the bone spurs removed. Yeah. I've had it, the my, my arm lengthened <laughs> or shortened, I think. The shoulder was shortened. They yeah. shortened one of them. Mm -hmm. Um. And like now it's just a matter of going in and cleaning up the, the torn ligament and damaged tissue. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. 
<laughs> like that's what it'll be when they go in and do the arthroscope. I know it. Mm-hmm. And maybe getting rid of some new bone spurs that I grew because I like right. to grow them. But yeah. Oh, and I have an appointment on Monday. Oh yeah. To go talk to the surgeon. The surgeon. And see what we want to do about ankles. So. Hey, dude, you have a cancellation this week. Let me. I know. know. I'm like, please, just really. <laughs> no. <it's laughs> I'll just fast the whole time. It'll have be you fine. Done- Oh, no, you did. You have recent MRI images, yeah? Yeah. Oh, then you're good. Yeah. Those were for this appointment. Yeah. So he'd better have a solution. Because for me, when the nurse called to schedule, she was like, to talk about, like, surgical options. And I was like, yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do it. (laughs) See, that's the thing. I Now I go into, I go to advanced (laughs) orthopedic. Uh They do sports medicine, right? So, like, I go in and I... I tell them what's going on and they're like, okay, blah, 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 PT imaging, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They do x-rays. They don't see anything. I tell them we need an MRI. They do the MRI. It takes a month. Like I know the process to get my, my joints looked at. Yeah. And then they tell you how shredded your labrum is and that they're horrified at <laughs> yeah, they didn't everything think they'd be able you've to done. <laughs> how are you moving? I don't know. I, <laughs> I just, just am. Exactly. I just do it. That's just, that's everything. Uh, just Nike. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. Or you don't, and then you die. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's sometimes you do. You have to just play the game and let them have their way and let them stroke their own ego. Yeah. Because they will. They'll get stuck or like hung up on one thing, and you just have to let it play out so you can move past it. Right. And so that they can drop it and leave it alone. Yeah. No, right it is. Now, it is like an ego game. Yeah. And it's, it's, I like the way that, that Ruth worded it. Cause we've always said more like we got to do the, It's part of the process. Yeah. But really it is, it's allowing harm to humor doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And that's ridiculous. If you think about it, like right. if you told the well people, <laughs> if you told them, yeah, I'm letting my doctor do this thing to me and it's horrible. And you'd be like, well, tell them, let them know they need to stop. Yeah. And you're like, I can't. This is you're a like, month long trial. Um, I'll be having an allergic reaction for the next three days. Mm-hmm. I just don't want to jug like you guys to know. And they're like, what? Why? And you're like, oh, because I have to do this thing because you have to do the thing sometimes because otherwise, like they don't believe you. Yeah. No. If you're like, I had a severe allergic reaction, they'd be like, hmm, well, when were you hospitalized? Yeah. And you're like, I don't do that. Yeah. Well, and it it's annoying in a way because like it's usually your first meeting with a new doctor yeah right so like if i went and i saw dr warrell right now who did my shoulders Mm -hmm. he would just be like okay let's touch up your shoulders that's fine he would do imaging to see what damage there is and what he needs to do and then Mm -hmm. that makes sense same with my hip when when i went in the second time i was like it's bad and he's like bad like before and i was like yeah and he's like okay let's do the surgery right but well, like that was the, Dr. Kong when right. I went back for the other. But the first time you meet them, it's usually like I have that you have to like explain it. And then uh-huh. you do their process, which usually takes like three to four months. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's exhausting. Yeah. Yes. Yep. It's a fun time for everyone. Vroom, vroom. That's me. It's OK. Vroom, vroom. Oof. My body is hurting. She needs a break. I think so. Are you ready to take a break? Yeah. OK, cool. All right, what do you guys need to do? You should know by now. And if you're new, someone will tell you. And it's going to be me, I'll tell you. <laughs> yes. Take a break and drink some water. Mm-hmm. Hydrate or... Dihydrate. Indeed. Um, have a snack. Yes. Because you are a snack. Take your meds, too, if you forgot. Because uh-huh. you've been delaying the alarm. It's using that alarm. You've and then you turned stop. it off. Why? On accident. Um, uh, you thought it was a snooze. Accident. Just take that was like two hours ago. Yeah. What are you doing? Right. (laughs) Take your five minute break from your chores. Yep. Take your meds. Have a snack. Drink some water. Yeah. Do something nice for yourself. Yeah. Because you deserve it. Yes. Have a bath. Do do a self care today. Yes. Maybe not right now, but do a self care. Okay. Um, And see if there's some sunlight because you can't go wrong. It's true. Unless you're blind like me. Delicate blue blue eyes. Baby. It's too bright. I hate it. I hate that when that happens. Such a child. All right. Rude. In the meantime, we're going to go do some of those things ourselves. Yes, And then we will return to um, talk about our younger selves. Yeah. That'll be interesting. This will be real interesting. Yeah. Some introspection. (laughs) Woohoo. All right. See you in a moment. Bye. Bye. 
Hey guys, did you know that Fantastic Canes now has a website? On our website, you can find our shop where we will be opening up for custom t-shirts and orders there. You can also find access to our PayPal, Winky Wink. You can buy us a coffee anytime. We would love that. You can also see some of our blog articles, access to recent episodes and our TikTok and uh, get in contact with us. You can also find a link to our Discord, which is getting updated pretty soon to include new channels and some games. We would also like to thank our producer for setting up the website. Thank you for supporting us and enjoy the rest of the show. Indeed, thank you. Welcome back. How was your break? <laughs> Mine, pretty great. How was your break? It was good. You got me. Yeah, but I didn't catch you mid-sentence. No, so I and I wasn't doing anything like super stupid, so it's okay. Yeah, I just... Yeah. brought this back because really like pressed for time she's got to do things yeah. it's it's a birthday yeah birthday stuff i gotta do a birthday yeah. yeah for those of you with siblings what do you think about this idea now, oh yeah this is this is the thing because we have a lot of siblings there's yeah. a lot of us there's more than four that's all you need to know but fewer than eight man <laughs> shut up stop making it real <laughs> <laughs> which one of us no it's <laughs> don't um I was thinking that we should just do like a yearly birthday, mm -hmm. like for all of us, because we never really get together on the birthday. Yeah. And our family structure is weird. So like, yeah, it'd be it would be easier just to do like one for all of us. Yeah. Get like a giant cake and then just bam. Yes. All birthdays at once. And then like you and said, then, we could do. Exactly. We, we all put our names in like a hat or a box and we draw names and that's who you get a gift for. Yeah. Which would be awesome. I'm just saying. Because I want to show yeah. like sibling appreciation, yeah. but I always miss the birthday, and then it's like weird afterwards. Like yeah. you're, I feel like if we, I you, just get to message them, I sometimes message people, but I have to be in the right state of mind. I have to yeah. be really outgoing that day, because uh -huh. I'm never on Facebook anyway. Well, because you never even <laughs> I understand that because you don't know who's gonna be like reply just once and mm -hmm. be like thanks, and who's gonna be like let's have a conversation now. Yep. Yeah. Gamble so, every time. Like I see it. I, if you have a birthday and you're on my Facebook, I, I recognize it and I happy birthday to you. But you're not going to hear that from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I don't like you. It's just that I don't like talking. Yes. <laughs> Fully. Yeah. All the time. Mm hmm. Nice little side tangent. Right. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, like our past selves impressions of us yes um yeah so that'll be, be really interesting. interesting and you wanted to go by age yeah 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 because i think it should be in intervals right like okay like because you could you could do just like you when you're really young like as a kid but mm -hmm. like i had no idea like i don't know what ages are then yeah no right well and even like you're gonna have a genetic disease or you have one brewing and it's gonna make it's like right <laughs> My younger self would be like, uh, I like turtles. <laughs> Good reference, I know. <laughs> so where do we start? We could start young. But like, it'd be one of those, like, having a conversation with you when you're young is like explaining the situation. Yeah. And then being like, y you you do this in the future. That's kind of neat, yeah. right? Right? Yeah. No, I think like teens and up maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially like... I want to do like every 10 years. So okay. 10 years back. So it'd be like 1727 and then now and then 47. Oh, that's old. <laughs> I'll be dead. <laughs> Tired. So 17. Yeah. Okay. I mean, right. That's like a really, yeah. like, it's like when we were starting to feel it. Yeah. Like there was things there that we didn't know were abnormal. Yeah. At the time, um, like 16 was a really big year for understanding that I wasn't quite right. Yeah. Because I was having those um, migraines at school and being questioned as to whether or not I was faking at the time. And that was really destructive to just me as a person. Um, what are you doing? Sorry. I, I had an urge to check something and I was right. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know. At that point, I was really struggling with yeah. the idea that like, Something felt so wrong and I didn't know what it was and everybody kept telling me that I was faking or like exaggerating or looking for attention and the last thing I wanted was attention. Um, so I think it would be, I would be baffled, first of all, that we have a podcast. 
Yeah. <laughs> the idea of talking in front of people would have scared the shit out yeah. of me. Like the idea that I sit in front of a camera and let people know things about me, like that we're just candid. Yeah. Like, oh my God, that'd be terrifying. Like, what are you doing? You, why? <laughs> What's the point? They're gonna know. Yeah. Well, if, for us, especially at that age. Yeah. Like your experience painted my experience. Yeah. What you went through was why I'd never talked about the fact that I had problems, mm -hmm. you know, like, like I knew that it wasn't going to go well. Yeah. And the one time I had like a serious issue right before I moved out, no one believed me. Mm -hmm. Like I had a bleeding ulcer. Yep. So it was, it was not fun for me. And I had to go <clears throat> to Metro Metropolitan State College, the doctor there. And yeah. Did stuff and got put on uh, an antibiotic to help with an infection just in case. And yeah. It healed up after a while, but it's that that kind of yeah like so uh, the first thing i'd want to do is validate myself you know be like it's real mm -hmm. and it's okay yeah like that's the big thing is the fact yeah. that it would be okay to not be well right well and i think at that age it's really hard to see a future mm -hmm. um especially when you have trauma it's hard to see or conceptualize about the future in general um and so for me, it was, I couldn't have like even looked ahead to 30. There's no way that I could have even no. conceptually put that together. Um, but I, I think validation would be one of those things where, yeah, you you want to tell that kid like what you're dealing with is real mm -hmm. and the struggle is real. And I recognize the struggle and it'll be okay later. Right. But later is a hard concept for a 17-year-old kid. Yeah, no. No, that would... Mm. <laughs> How much later? Yeah, right. Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, one of the, the, the postulations I wanted to throw in there was like all three meeting. You know, like 17, 27, and like 37. Oh, wow. Because no one would like me when I'm 27. <laughs> we would not... Like people did. That's fine for people. But... Us as 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 Chris, no, twenty seven year old us is not a good guy. No, he's a monster. <laughs> no sympathy, huh? No, because it's so easy to fix. <laughs> Just start taking care of yourself, like actively give a shit. So I'd probably give them love. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Be like, I love you, you degenerate. <laughs> You're worth taking care exactly. of. Exactly, because that. That boy was a mess. Yeah. No, it was. And for me, it would have been, I don't know, like 17, mid 20s and then 30. I guess. Yeah. Makes the most sense. Because, um, yeah, after the car accident, when I was 16, everything kind of started that like yeah. downward spiral. And I know that's true for a lot of people where they have like one culminating event that kicks off the um, decline. Mm hmm. So for me, that would have been it. And then looking ahead to be like, I don't know, 20 and mid 20s. Um, at 18, I was like semi validated that something was wrong, but there was no solution and I didn't have insurance. Right. And so I saw doctors when I absolutely had to and when I was in like too much pain to function. Yep. And then mid 20s me was much more. I don't know. Let's see. When were we, when were we diagnosed? It was like 2018. Yeah. Ish. Mm -hmm. Um. I would have so been five years ago. Is that right? Yeah, it would have been around 30 for me. Yeah. 30, 31. So five years ago, it would have been like yeah, 31. Yeah. Which would have made me yeah, 25. I was 25 when I was diagnosed. <laughs> yeah. Well. And like we were saying before, like those people were a lot angrier than we are now. Yes. <laughs> like if you go Even back. Even two years ago. Yeah. If you go back to the beginning of the podcast, we're just definitely a lot more spicy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just angrier in general. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> we, we felt like we were in this huge void mm -hmm. where we couldn't find the people who were like us. And we were like, I don't have one of this. Therefore, I'm going to make one of this Yeah, and suck it, all you people who want to do <laughs> clinical boring stuff or poor me stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> neither of those things are what I'm after, and they make me feel lonely and gross and weird. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of anger there. Oh, yeah. But even after diagnosis, there was a lot of like, 
anger retroactively. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. There's a lot of like, wow, we could have known. We could have known. We could <laughs> yes. have known. You could have taken me to a doctor. You could have looked at that. You could have believed me. There were a lot of things that we had to work through. Yeah. Like, And that took years. Yeah. Like years and years before I was okay enough to just like let it lie. Mm -hmm. And it took a lot of processing. <laughs> so Absolutely. I think- I think that person would be impressed with where I am now. I think that they would. Um, I don't even know. It's hard to think because 25 ish year old me. I was validated at that point. Yeah. And I would have wanted to know what was ahead, I think. And so that would have been the like, I'm impressed with you, but I'm also worried. Yeah. Because <laughs> you look a little rough, bud. <laughs> Yeah, no. If I if I talk to my twenty seven year old self, ugh, like that was that was me during the worst depression. Mm -hmm. Like that was the bottom yeah. of the bottom. Like things were not looking good, and that's when I started to like start working on getting answers and solving things like for the kids and yeah. So I think I'd be impressed. I'd be jealous. I know that. Mm. I'd be like, oh wow, like. What, how do we get there exactly yeah. what what what's the magic cure and i'll be like taking care of yourself dummy right <laughs> you matter 17 year old me would have been there too mm -hmm. with the like how how do we wind up like that how do we get through the anger and the loneliness and the unsureness mm -hmm. how do we get to where we are now and it's really now we can look back and be like it's a matter of going through it mm-hmm the only way through it is through it. Yeah, exactly. You have to go through it. You can't avoid it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like at 27, that's when I was like, all right, diving in. Gonna gonna start caring because I have no other option. It's either that or I'm going to not be here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to think about. Because yeah. even, even just two years ago, like we've had so much growth through the podcast mm -hmm. that I think even two years ago, we wouldn't have recognized who we are today or... And like I was saying, like, we're more at peace now. Oh, yeah. We still struggle, but we are okay with the fact that we struggle. Right. Like. We're not fighting it. Right. All the time. And we're not. It doesn't feel like defeat anymore. Mm -hmm. Like being chronically ill doesn't feel like defeat. No. But I think part of me in the past might have been angry at how many things I've had to, like, give way on. How many things, like, what I've had to compromise throughout. But I think, because at that point, it was all about, like, I can't lose to the body. Yeah. And so I think the things that we've learned through the podcast and the skills that we've practiced through the podcast would feel like defeat and, like, a sellout, maybe. Right. In a way. Yeah. I think I would be upset in a way yeah at 27 27 year old me because i just failed out of the the youtube channel oh like it, it didn't bomb we just i couldn't do it yeah like it was a lot and i was degrading quickly mm -hmm. and, and at that point i was it was all in my head like i still didn't know what it was didn't yeah. think it was real so like if i was like oh yeah in the future you have a podcast I'd be like Where, where'd that come what? from what <laughs> <laughs> And then to be How? like, you, you're just open and you talk about everything. You'd be like, whoa, you you don't censor your stuff? Like, no. bro. No. Yeah. It's like when the therapist asked me, like, do I front for the podcast? And I was like, no. Like, the podcast is the most me I can be. Mm -hmm. That is the most me that you will ever see is on the podcast. <laughs> because, and I think at that point, it was a lot of like, Maybe not trying to hide it, but starting to introduce the illness to other people, mm -hmm. but still really cautious about it, like almost in defense of it. Right. Because if you put it out there, then people can do de like devalue it and you. And then the questions of do they believe me come back. Yeah. And I was at that point, I think. We both had major imposter syndrome. Yeah. Because we were new to it. Yeah. So like. Well, and a lot of like fortune telling where we were like, well, they're going to think, well, they're going to see, well, they're going to say. Yeah. 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 That would be me like in, let's see, <clears throat> if you were 
25. Yeah, it would have been 30. That 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 would have been a much better me. Cuz like Yeah. I was I was actively taking care of myself. I'd had mm-hmm. surgeries to improve my living conditions. Yeah. And like we were we were we just got the answer. So like yeah. if I told him, "Oh man, he would have been mind blown." He would have been like happy for us. Mm-hmm. You know, cuz he was a lot less edgy i think they'd be amazed at how much we've learned yeah just um even just the medical side beyond just like oh it's eds because that got bigger and bigger and bigger oh, as yeah. time went on and you have like mcas and pots and then you have all these other like weird things just clinging oh, around God. it'd be fun to sit down and be like so you know that thing you know like when uh you feel drained uh-huh. and you have no energy that's just chronic fatigue man that's a thing. It's a thing. It's, it's real. Like, wait, what? you're not lazy. Yeah, there's there are things that you can do to fix that. Uh-huh. Like, oh my god. Right. Or or even like MCAS, like explaining that. Like, remember when you would swell up and mm-hmm. everything would suck for no reason. That's a thing. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's so many things that are like, oh my god, that's that's all been the digestive happening to stuff. Me. Yeah. Since forever, that would have been a big one for that like 17 year old me. Yeah. Because I was frustrated with like being the skinny kid right and i was frustrated with people thinking that i was anorexic because i tried that label on because i didn't fully understand right and people just kind of handed it to right. me when you're being called that it's yeah. like well i and guess I, like, I am i guess i i guess i am okay sure it's like in south park <laughs> when they call kanye a gay fish until he becomes a gay fish exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's that uh-huh but yeah it's it's different mm-hmm and it is, it's like, it's different because we can have sympathy for ourselves in the past. Yeah. Which I don't think we could have had at either of those ages. We were still so self-deprecating and angry with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 17-year-old me would have been interesting. Because <laughs> I wasn't really jaded yet. Yeah. Like, I was starting to be, mm-hmm. you know, like. I was also really good at holding things down. Like at that point I had compartmentalized all my trauma away Mm -hmm. and I was just living in the, the perfect happy world where nothing's wrong. Yeah. You know, being really delusional. If I was like in the future, dude, you're going to have to accept the fact that this happened and you're going to talk about it in front of people. He would have been like mortified. Yeah. And probably like intrigued because like it works, you know, be like, Oh, well shoot. Yeah. Maybe I need to rethink my whole paradigm. Well, the same thing f- goes for like accepting different labels. Yeah. And not being afraid of them, like disabled. Yeah. And like chronically ill. Because all of that to us would have represented some kind of weakness. Oh, yeah. That we were like, I can't sh- tell everyone that I have weakness. <laughs> yeah, no. How will I protect myself? That if would they have know? been something that I had. Yeah. Even probably at 27. I probably would have still been like, yeah, just we won't talk about it. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to tell people about this. This is this is my problem. Right. Right. I did it to myself. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Especially at that age. Yeah. And accepting like mental illness, too. That was huge. That at 30 is when I started to take that seriously. Yeah. Like, that's when I was like fully accepting of what happened to me. And I told my mom about everything. Mm-hmm. I was like, so actually, remember how I told you it was this other thing? It was actually a lot worse than that. And yeah. she was like, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, to protect you? Which was Aww. partially true. But yeah, but the also rest to protect was, you. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because if you tell people, it's real. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense. Like, I also think I'd be really impressed with how I've utilized the things that I'm already good at and was already good yeah. at at the time. And accepted that they yeah. are advantages for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I do have the curse of the gift of understanding. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> yeah, to know that I'm actually using my skill set like that. Yeah. Like, and that it's okay to use it. Yeah. And it's not being manipulative and it's not like a <laughs> future telling in a way. Like, 27 year old me thought he was a sociopath because he was using people. Mm hmm. Because I could read people well, and, yeah. and I just felt like a crazy person. Like, like I was like, am I just faking everything? What yeah. What is reality? Right. Ugh. Well, and because you could think of options ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And yeah. It's just, it's different. It's weird for that person to think about being so open about everything. Yeah. And feeling safe enough to be open about everything. Very being true. Being like, what are you doing? 
What in the heck? What are you doing? Yeah. No joke. <laughs> when I moved into my house, I had a full-blown meltdown because my husband wanted to get a big flashy sign for no soliciting. Mm -hmm. And I just about lost my mind because I was like, oh, my God, people are going to look at our house and then they're going to know we're here. Yeah. What? I was like, you're drawing attention to us. Stop it. It was incognito for well, no reason. Some of that comes from the fact that you had been living in a basement for years. And yeah. You were, and you were trying to avoid people. Like you needed your you time in space. Yeah. You didn't have it. No. So that was that was like danger to your home. Is uh -huh. like, no, I, this is my space. Nobody needs to know about it. Uh, yeah. I was like, this is my secret lair. As mm -hmm. soon as the garage door closes, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. This is, I, I live here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, and I think we've gained a different kind of self-understanding. Yeah. And I don't know. It's weird because we have almost like partnered with our own selves. Yes. And acknowledged the like hurt child within and then taken that little kid by the hand and been like, it's going to be okay, bud. Right. Let's work through this stuff. Instead of being like, okay, no, we, you can't cry because we weren't allowed to cry. And so crying is weakness. And so now I have disdain for that small child inside of me. Right. Instead of compassion for that small child inside of me. Yeah. Dang. Because there was a lot of disdain for that part of me. Even at the beginning of the podcast, I was having, still having anxiety attacks, wasn't I? Yeah. Like I was still working on mm -hmm. balancing my meds and like yeah. working through my issues to the mm -hmm. point where I'd stop having meltdowns right. when I'd heard like loud popping noises. Yeah. Dang. That's weird. Isn't that strange? Yeah. The amount of growth we've had through this and like the people that we have collected when I didn't, I couldn't fathom having like online friends. Mm-hmm even like three four years ago <laughs> be like that's no 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 what are you no. talking about they don't want you for you like they don't care about you <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're just internet friends yeah. no I, I get it yeah because I, I would have been the same until like I, I i met austin after the podcast yeah yeah, yeah. it would have been like three months in yeah that i met him but i think through the podcast i was able to actually like mm -hmm be open and be myself to people yeah. online and actually talk yeah. about meaningful things and collect friends. Right. And really good ones too. Mm -hmm. Really lovely, wonderful human beings. Yeah. That we <laughs> were like, how do we deserve this stop? Yeah. No, if we went to but also don't stop the day, we if we went back to the day that we started the podcast mm -hmm. and we were like, Oh, so it goes well. Be like really like yeah no it the, dude it's gonna grow you're gonna like it you're gonna love it you're gonna hate it but it's you're gonna, gonna love be it. your baby yeah yeah and you're gonna make friends and you're gonna have like a community yeah be like what the f <laughs> people yeah. yeah imagine that yeah you're not alone yeah and I think even if they thought that like what we do is terrifying I think it would have given them hope. Oh, yeah. At the time that, like, there is something different around the corner. I mean, we were brave enough to do the first recording. Right. We had enough gumption. Yeah. Well, because at that point, we were like, it doesn't have to go up if it's terrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was that. You don't have to yeah. do it. Well, and we did the camera on a whim. Because yeah. I was like, I can't just talk into thin air. Yeah. I need, I need something to talk to. And so I was like, what about the camera? And he was like video cast and i was like yeah that's what she wanted yeah and then the podcast made itself yep Ugh. yes it did but yeah i mean talking talking to teenage me it would have been a trip and a, a half yeah 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 because i was very very duplicitous in a way hmm. well because like i had a lot going on internally yeah but i just didn't wear it <laughs> You know, like now I just talk about it. If I have an issue, yeah. I talk about it. Yeah. I would never, never would have said anything. No. So like talking to me and being like, hey, I know what you're going through would have been like. Ugh. Oh, earth shattering. Right. Like. Hello. Instant tears. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I can cut you right to your core. You ready? I just made myself cry. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. And then to be like, you know, it gets better. Yeah. It's, and it gets worse at the same time. Yep. It would have been frightening and. and probably exciting in a way yeah you know yeah 
I think it would have been so strange to just look forward at all at that point and be like, oh, there is a future. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, no, at that age, I real until it was happening. Genuinely thought I was going to be dead by 27. Not for myself. Just I was like, something bad's going to happen and I'm going to be dead. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I couldn't have envisioned a future and definitely not this one. No, this is a weird one. But I'm good with this. This one. is the weirdest parallel universe. Yeah. Like, you know how the people are always like, this parallel. is the darkest timeline. This is the weirdest <laughs> this is timeline. This is the weirdest one. This is the most wholesome, weird, <laughs> the most weird wholesome. one. Bizarre. Should we call it? Mm. 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 We can. Was there more you wanted to do? Oh, we didn't do predictive. I wanted to do oh, yeah, yeah. that real quick. Okay, so walk me through what you're thinking. I'm thinking just 10 years in the future. Okay. What would you, what do you, like, what do you, what would you expect? And then what do you think, like, how you would react to the podcast? You know what I mean? Like, if we're still doing it in we 10 years, that would still be, be doing it. <laughs> that would be cool. I'm down. That would be really cool. Right. I would be into that. Yeah. I'd be really old, though. <laughs> I'm only seven years behind you, man. Uh, yeah, that's you know, ten years. You're only gonna be thirty, forty. Yeah, I'll be forty. Ugh, that's old. She's gonna be <laughs> decrepit. Yeah, she won't even. She'll be a shell of a person. <laughs> or maybe I'll still look at, like myself because EDS is weird, and we won't age at all. That's true. People Frozen give me that all the time. time. Like you don't look old, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> The things I've seen. I don't know. Like, I'd assume that if if the podcast died, that it died naturally and not mm-hmm. like a horrible death. Like, yeah. there's no way we're gonna have like a blowout or no. anything. But if like it it aged out or something, yeah, I'd probably still look back at it fondly. Like oh, this yeah. time is definitely a good time. Yeah, like you have like golden eras in, yeah. in like your life. This is definitely one of them. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and <laughs> if I'm being optimistic here in 10 years i'd hope to be working as little as possible and be working on the podcast like full time yeah that would be a dream it would be a dream yeah and collaborating with people yes and being like more connected and more savvy oh god that would dude i could totally see it though like i could see us in 10 years being like now we're out and we're like we have a community of of other podcasters that we talk to and like friends and yeah Oh, see that that freaks me out which means that it it's possible yeah the same way that like going back to years and being like you talk about all your feelings you nerd well, and it's weird for me to be optimistic at all because i'm yeah. like i don't know true <laughs> very true i don't make predictions about the future normally but i have i've come through this like crisis cycle too mm-hmm. and grown a lot from that and again reminded myself that there is stuff on the other side yeah where you're like oh yeah no that time does end it happens but it ends and then you get to live different times yeah and and i told her in the middle of it i was like you know what stop being a little bitch it gets better just like that no i was like and then i cried well i did say something and you did cry but it wasn't when you know i wasn't being mean (laughs) i was like this will pass yeah all things will pass this too shall and it, and it will be okay yeah but like when you're it's in such it such a weird comforting thought too yeah to be like everything will come and go mm-hmm. and that's okay like time moves forward regardless of what happens yeah well, that's what i mean like maybe the podcast turns into something else yeah. you know like it, it could evolve it could change into i don't know books ted talks <laughs> TED talk. I, no, oh, there's, please. dude. If I'm ever doing a TED talk, what? <laughs> What's wrong with you? If you need me to tell you stuff, <laughs> you have problems, <laughs> big ones. Like, who's gonna listen to that? I'm just like, hey, EDS. Uh, life sucks, and then it doesn't. Uh, you want to talk about anime? <laughs> you, you like anime? <laughs> you, you like spicy sandwiches? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I like could spicy. Use some spicy sandwiches. Yeah, that's how you catch your friend from <laughs> trauma. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'd want to be doing a lot of like trauma work and trauma recovery work too. Yeah, through the podcast. It's like I'm good at it. Dang it! 
and I'm recognizing I'm good at it. What which I've is been totally weird. This is this is gonna be weird to say because this is one of those like deep thoughts that you don't tell people. Huh. It's like one of those thoughts you hold on to. You're like, yeah. this is this is something I want to happen, but I don't want to say it because it's gonna. Oh yeah. It. Okay. But like, I would like it to turn into something that's helpful and beneficial to people. Yeah. Like I know we already do help people, but not like I want to be on a bigger scale. Yeah. But I don't want to lose touch with our people now. No. So we'll just have to take us with them. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Agreed. But you know what I mean. Like, yeah. do something big. Right. Like, make an actual change. Yeah. Yeah. Do, like, advocacy work or something. Exactly. Yeah. Something like that would be amazing. Awareness and advocacy. Mm-hmm. That's... That's, that's one of my, like, secret thoughts, too, is to, like, work with the media. Right. And just to get, like, a story out. Mm-hmm would be interesting i agree yeah like i just dreaming big i know that's weird it's just this is not gonna happen we're we just gonna have a podcast for five more years and then we're gonna like <laughs> turn into dumpies like to become pessimists and everything's gonna be wrong and <laughs> we're gonna get in a fight about those darn kids about topics and they'll be like i want to take it in this topic and you'll be like i hate that topic and then we'll hit each other with sticks <laughs> and that'll be it that'll be the end of the content sorry i had to be pessimistic stick battle. I, had to, I had to throw a pessimism in there to uh, balance to out balance out the universe yeah. yeah exactly i like the stick battle though stick battle yeah we'll just hit each other with sticks yeah that's in what my mom future. always told me she's gonna get a cane and beat me with a stick when she gets old <laughs> love you mom good 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 wonderful you should still be watching these by the way you should comment if you don't comment i'm gonna know <laughs> this is a test this is like the end of the episode <laughs> if you don't comment we're gonna have a problem we're going to have to have a talk. <laughs> the talk. Okay, love you. Bye. <laughs> also, if you're not in the Discord, please feel free to leave us a comment. We love our comments. Mm-hmm. We always reply to comments. Um, and we would love to hear from some of our uh, newer people as well. Yeah, questions about stuff that we talk about. Questions you have about general. Like, yeah. you know, is this normal? Does this happen to you? Uh, topic ideas Mm -hmm. if you if you have something you want us to talk about or look into yeah like there's nothing off the table right feel free to talk we are we are here right and if you've decided you like it give it a share yeah we grow we try slow grow slow grow but we slow grow but we're okay with the slow grow because we didn't set out to be like big no and the natural progression has given us the most beautiful community so like I'm down. Well, and lovely experiences that are not, like, tainted by other things. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm game. End it? Yeah? Yeah. All done. Bye. No, I'm wow. just <laughs> That would have ruined me. I would not I would not sleep tonight. <laughs> I would have been... turn it off right away. Right. I would have been like that. Mm. She would have just still been sitting here, like. <laughs> just waiting. Next week she comes in. I'm still waiting. Like, please end the podcast. Please end the podcast. <laughs> I really need it to end. I have to be so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you made it this far, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. We love our community. Um, we like to hear from you. Um, and join us in Discord so that we can chat mm-hmm. for sure. But in the meantime, be kind to you. Be kind to others, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Are you Are you happy now? Yeah, I feel better. Okay. I feel much better. I'm glad. It was a good ending. We need to talk about how they can find the link of the Discord like in the description. Oh yeah. So if you if you're still watching this, Craig. You know where the link to the Discord is because you're the only one that watches these. But you're already in the Discord, so. Mm. <laughs>